Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stormworks video. In today's video we're going to be going through the user interface of the workbench itself. Uh, pretty much go through each one of the different components and items and controls. Along with that I'll show you a couple of different shortcut keys that can obviously hopefully speed up the build process for yourself. So with that all said we'll go ahead and get started. So we've come to our workbench here. Uh, first I'll be talking about is going to be the left side and I'll work my way around up to the right and then to the bottom of the screen itself going through the different controls. So first off on the left we have our paint section here. So this is pretty much going to be a color selection of all the different types of colors that are defaultly provided in the game itself. So as soon as we click one of them you can obviously see that any of our components will change the color when we place it down. At the bottom of the screen, you have a big, large circle. This is going to be for custom colors. You can go ahead and change this color by just moving the three different um, wheels across. And once we've decided on what color we actually want, we can go ahead and actually save it by pressing the plus button over here, selecting a section you want, and then now that number, that color is saved and is always accessible by once again, just pressing on the large circle, and then you can use that to then select that color. We'll move on to our paint section itself. So first off we have is just the standard brush. Standard brush is just simply for painting blocks themselves in different colors. As you can see here, we have now gone and painted the different blocks themselves. Next off we have is going to be the additive. The additive paint mode is then now used for actually painting lights and gauges and different things, including paint, uh, paintable signs. So you can see here, once I have the additive selected, for example, I'm going to select blue. You can see here, it goes ahead and changes any of the light options to blue. By default, obviously, gauges and displays and any of those components will automatically be placed with the same color as the external block or external piece of the block itself. So for example, if we were to go ahead and place the same component, hit the digital dial, you'll see here that if we place it in white, you can see the backlight is white. If we place it in a dark red, it's going to have a backlight of dark red and so on and so forth. So that option allows us to go in and change that specific color, which is quite nice. Next off we have is going to be the replace color. This will take any color and replace it with a desired color. So for example, I'm going to choose this peach color. I want all my blocks on the whole entire creation to be changed. For example, the gray one here, I want that to be peach. Select it, and you can see now everything has been changed. Next off we have is going to be the plane fill. Very useful for actually painting just sections of your ship. So for all creation. So for example, you have a a line through your hull and you want the bottom of your hull to be a dark red and you want a line to be black. So say for example, this is a black line going across a hull. This is the white section. Sorry, this is the white section here. And now we want this whole section here to be a dark red. You can go ahead and select the um, plane fill and click on it. And you can see that whole section, anything on that same um, side is, and anything connected to it with that is going to change color. You'll see here it hasn't gone and changed any of the top colors, even though we've built it as the same entity. Uh, and that goes for the same here. If we want just the side to be red, just the side to be red, it's gonna, you can actually paint the whole thing instead of, in, instead of individually going through and holding and painting everything. It just speeds up the build process a little bit further. Now, next off we have is going to be, once we've, we've covered all this, We'll now move along the top of the screen. I'm not going to talk about any of these because they're quite self-explanatory. Uh, next off I'll talk about is the workshop, uh, how to upload your creation to the workshop itself. Click this button, you'll see here, upload new vehicle. You can now go ahead, give your creation a name, select the vehicle type, select the functionality and select the properties of it. And then you press pretty much upload and it's going to upload it straight to the workshop. Pretty nice, easy and simple. You can then go into your Steam, manage it from there, add pictures, videos, add a description, so on and so forth. This is just the basics to actually get it on the workshop itself. Once we've done that, um, I'm gonna talk about next off, selection. You can go ahead, obviously this bar, this uh, mode lets you go ahead and select different components and access their properties. You also have the arrays. Obviously you can go and delete things. A shortcut key on the keyboard for erase is the X key. So you can see here, we can just quickly jump between the two, between the two, placing or deleting. We have the paint, which we've obviously already gone through. We also have the move 
buttons, which you can go ahead and move your creation around the build area itself. Obviously on the three different axes, backwards and forwards, left and right, up and down. We also have the logic button. So that goes ahead and opens up our logic screen. At the moment, because I'm in advanced mode, I only have access to data and electricity. If you were in a normal mode, you would also have power and fluid. We then also have the merge functionality. As you can see here, we obviously only have one entity at the moment. However, if, for example, we were using, um, let's say, our pivot, you'll see here that as soon as we place down the pivot, it's going to make a different entity itself here. So that's good for seeing different entities. Now, but what's the actual function of this button? The function of this button is, for example, if we had two different entities, say this and this, and we were to go ahead and delete this pivot block, you'll see that this is a different entity to this. So it's not it's not joined in any way or form. If we would spawn it in, you could actually move this block around without moving this at all. If we wanted to go ahead and connect it, you can't just go ahead and actually bring the blocks across and actually connect it that way. You'll see that if we build right next to it, it will not connect it. It keeps it as two separate entities. And that's where the merge button comes in. You can go ahead and click this button, click there, and it goes ahead and merges it completely together. Next off we have is going to be one of the newer features in this whole toolbar itself. It's going to be the selection grid. This is useful for copying, pasting, cutting any pieces of your build. So for example, um, we'll start off by saying we want to copy this white area and we want to place another one on the side. You can go ahead, use your selection tool, move it around by obviously just moving it up, down, left and right until you want it where you want it. Click the resize button. You can then go and obviously select how much of it you want. So for example, we only want that much. Now you have two options. You can either go ahead and move and cut it this will physically take it off from that section. You can then go ahead and place it on the opposite side if you want. Once we have that done, you can obviously also, I'm just going to go ahead and clear that content. Um, so say, for example, we now want to take this, but we want it on both sides instead of deleting it. Use the copy feature. You can see here it's left that block there, and it's also duplicated it. And now we can go ahead and place it down. One thing to note that if you are using the selection tool, and copying and pasting things and cutting things, you'll see that when we've placed it, they place as new entities. Once again, go to the merge button. You can go ahead and merge these together. Next off we have on this section is also going to just be a couple of the different features here. You also have a load content button. This can be useful for loading um, sub components or sub builds that you have. So if you have, for example, a radar system and you want to copy and copy that and paste it onto your creation, you can quickly go ahead load it, load it into this actual build and paste it on your content. This is quite useful for taking items from different builds and moving it to a new build instead of rebuilding the whole section again. And then lastly, you also have a save thing. So once we have actually something selected, so for example, we take that, I'm going to press copy. You can now go ahead and save this and you can save it as a complete new creation. Quite useful, once again, if you were to take it and you want to push it to another another creation that you have or something else you're working on. And then obviously you have a reset button there, which resets it. Um, pretty simple. Delete that, reset, and you can see now the grid is reset and snap back to the default position and the default size. So with that taken care of, uh, we'll start moving on to the right of our screen. So first off, we have is going to be symmetry blocks. Symmetry on three different axes. You obviously have disabled. You have it on the X axis, Y axis, and then on the Z axis. Go ahead and press on the X axis. You can see here that now anything we build on the left is duplicated on the right. Same goes for the Y plane. Anything built above that line is going to be duplicated on the bottom. And then same goes for the Z plane. Anything built on the front is going to be delete, uh, built on the back. You can go ahead with any of these and select your show hide move widget. This will let you actually replace where that bar is on the screen. So it's quite useful if you haven't had this enabled while you've been building something, and then all of a sudden you want to, you want to, for example, use your X plane. But you can see, for example, here I haven't been building on the center. So now, instead of deleting this whole project and starting again in the center, you can just go ahead, select that, move it to the center of, of your build where you want it. So, for example, I want it there. And I'll enable that, and now you can see it's physically gone and moved it, and now we can build as if the center of the line of the build is right over here. 
Let's go ahead and disable that. We'll then move on to our section plane. Section plane is quite useful. Once again, X, Y, Z um, basis, you can go ahead and hide blocks. So for example, on X plane, if this was the inside of our ship, you can go ahead, go ahead and hide the outside and then just work on the center of your, of your screen. So for example, I'm just gonna go ahead and disable this quickly and give you a quick um, tutorial on how, or quick demonstration. So say for example, we had a complete square block. Now by default, we wouldn't be able to see inside it. You would have to go ahead and obviously by default go inside and work around like this. However, if you go and use the section plane, enable the Y, you can see here that we can go ahead and move that around where we want. So for example, you can see here now I can just work from here and I can see everything inside there and carry on building. However, if we go to and disenable it, you can see we still have our outside area built. And then same goes with this, you can just use this to move it around. Next off we have is going to be our camera angle. Camera angle itself as default is in the free mode. Free mode obviously is controlled by W, S, A, D, left, right, forwards, backwards, spacebar to move up, alt to move down. The other option we have is going to be our orbit mode. Orbit mode itself will focus on any point by pressing F it will then orbit around that point. As you can see, it's always got that in its focus and you can, by holding down right click, you can then orbit around that. Press F again, you can focus on something else. This is quite useful if you want to actually see outside of your build area. area. So you can see here, I can actually see the whole build area itself. Whereas if we're in free mode, it only lets us go as far as the build area itself. Next off we have is going to be the center of mass. Center of mass block, once we have it enabled, will tell us obviously the center of mass of the build itself. So you can see here that if we've obviously by accident or we've been building along and we've made one side heavier than the other side. So I'll set a whole bunch of weight blocks there. You can see here our center of mass has moved from the center of the build to the one side. So this is good for obviously troubleshooting where your center of mass is. So for example, if your boat is leaning on one side, you can go ahead and look at this and it will tell you, oh, well, hold on, you've got a lot of weight on one side. That's why it's leaning over to one side. Next off we have is going to be direction arrows. Direction arrows are quite useful for placing down anything that moves. So for example, we'll place down a wheel you can see here when you place down the wheel, it gives us all our direction arrows. So the wheel moves forward that direction. And then you can all see which way it rotates if we were to rotate it. So that's great for, for the direction arrows. Next, you have rotation labels. This is pretty much just to tell us what keys will do what on our keyboard. So if we were to go ahead and place this block down, you can see now it now shows us what keyboards, what keys on the keyboard will do what to the screen. So you have your three different axes, X, Y, and Z. And depending on which one you want to alter, you can go ahead and press these, these buttons. So for example, J, L, K, and then you have U, sorry, yeah, U, I, and I. Obviously you won't see anything now because it's there. Let's go ahead and select that. You can see obviously it's changing its direction if we were to go. You can see that well, pretty much what that does. Next off we have is going to be the grid lines. By default, this is usually enabled. Obviously just shows you the grid of the blocks themselves one by one. Next off we have is going to be the measurement. This is very useful for if you're building in a specific um, criteria. So your build, for example, has to be 10 by 10. Hold the block down, bring it along. You can see now on the bottom right, it's popped up a little screen. It will now show the measurement in meters and also in block length. So you can see the X, Y, and Z platform. And then you can see here that obviously as we move it along, depending on where we obviously move it along on our build, it's gonna go ahead and measure that in different colors for us. And then lastly, we have is going to be the world view. Pretty much brings us whichever area we are, because obviously we're here on the creative island. It's not gonna show us the creative island. Quite useful, obviously, if you're just trying to figure out how things will look in real life. Um, it's quite nice because obviously it gives you the 360 of which area you're in. And then you can also go ahead and use your direction arrows. Uh, sorry, you can go ahead and use your move. You can move that down. You can see now how it's, how it's going to be sitting in the water, for example, and move it down and so on and so forth. So with that done, uh, what we'll do is we'll really just talk about the bottom here. You obviously have your hotkeys here. These hotkeys, a lot of people don't know, is you can actually access them by using 
for so here for example i have this one selected here if i press 2 it switches to these so you can use your one two three four five six and it switches between them which is quite useful uh, one last thing i haven't covered is going to be the control feature as you can see here it's saying hold control to i drop components so if i was to go ahead and hold down control even though i have inverse permanent currently on hold down control select the digital display you can see now it's copied that and I can now place that component down wherever I want. And so you can do that with any of these blocks. It will take the color and the component or block and duplicate it and put it wherever you want to put it. That's also useful. The control feature also works for logic. So if you were to go ahead and actually want to take, say for example, I want to take that and connect it to a whole bunch of objects, hold down control and you can see when I let go of the left click, it continues to hold it. Whereas if you weren't holding down a control, it automatically releases it after every single click. Quite useful and quite and quite uh, helpful, actually. Uh, and that's pretty much about it. I won't talk about this anymore. Uh, I think that's pretty much the brief of it and covers all the basics. Um, obviously, please do let me know in the comments if there's anything else that I have missed or that I have gotten wrong. I don't think I have. Uh, but as always, I hope you found it useful and somewhat uh, informative. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for any future contact. And we'll see you in the next one.